So thank you, Chairman. First, I would like to appreciate of organizers for inviting me to this nice conference. And today I'm going to talk on stability of line solitons of KP2, which the KP2 equation is how to do this? You know how to put Okay, so this equation is so called KP2 equation. The equation was derived by Kad Russian physicist Kadmotsev and P via Shivri in 1790s. And the equation is a generalization of the, K K the KDV equation. So, to explain the model, I cannot put the picture into this slide, so I use blackboard here. For KDV, the wave moves to one direction, to the x direction. And here, the, fun the unknown function u means the, the elevation of water waves from the level. And uh, the, KP2 e the KP equation is a model which takes slow variation in the transversal direction. So the water is supposed to move mainly to the x direction, forward, uh, but the KP equation considers the effect of slow variation in the transversal direction. So the equation is suitable to describe the behavior of, of water waves, such as water waves in beach or something like that. And here, here's a parameter sigma, and sigma is supposed to be positive when the surface tension is zero or weak. And this, that's a KP2 equation. And see if sigma is negative, then the equation is so-called KP1. And that, in that case, the equation describes motion of waves with strong surface tension. And this KP equation is an integrable equation as KDV equation. And since, if you see this e the equation, the first three term is exactly the same as KDV equation. And there's only one extra term here. So if function u is not, does not depend on y, and if the function u is a solution of this KDV equation, it automatically satisfies this KP equation. So if you think of the solitary wave, once solitary wave solution of the KDV equation, then it immediately it's also a solution of this KP equation, and we call it a line certain solution. And uh, because of the rotational invariance of, actually it's not rotational invariant, but it, this KP equation has something similar to rotational invariance. Because of this, high, the highest order term is not isometric, there, there's no rotational invariance, but there's something similar. And uh, using that rotational, quasi-rotational invariance, you can see that this equation is also a solution of this KP equation, thanks to the quasi-rotational invariance. So th if you consider the one-line soliton, there are three parameters. One is amplitude, one is uh, phase shift in x direction, and the other is the direction of line solitons. And this is a picture of the uh, phenomena, which, which is well described by KDV equation. So here is our aqueduct, which is not very narrow, and water is very shallow. And if you, if the boat, if the, you move the boat, if the, if the boat, boat, a boat move in this small aqueduct, and suddenly stops, there appears some wave with one hump. And uh, this is uh, considered to be a solitary wave. You can see these, uh, these types of wave in a small, um, what? If you go somewhere in the city and if you find some small aqueduct like this, and if the wind blows, you can f see that this type of wave occurs in daily life. And uh, for KP, 
if the width of aqueduct is narrow enough, although it has some transversal direction, why, you don't need to take into account. But in the, in the beach, the transversal direction is very long in beach. So something different happens because in the beach, there are some solitons, solitary wave, which is uniform in one direction. And uh, this, this type of wave occur is caused by some wind. And if the wind changes, there appears another line solitons. And there's some crossing patterns, like this one. And uh, this is a line certain. It's, uh, I think this is, the picture is taken by Abrovitz. And I can fi find them in his website. <laughs> and so there are many patterns. And uh, of course, this is not exact solutions of the KP equation, but uh, the KP, uh, KP equation is considered to be a good approximation of these wave patterns. For example, if you use, the, and they can be written explicitly by using some, tau, using tau functions. Here, here is the definition of tau functions. Um, and uh, here E is an exponential function like this. Basically, the parameter ki corresponds to the amplitude of each line certain. And these are exponential functions. And there are n, m exponential functions. And if you multiply some de matrix here, uh, there should be some restriction because we need tau function to be positive definite. Uh, but, and if you take the logarithm of this fu tau function and differentiate twice and multiply by by two, then this becomes a solution of the KP equation. Of, and this, this uh, simple formula includes a lot of wave patterns. The simplest one is that the case where m equal two. For example, if k1 is k and k2 equals minus k, then it becomes a line certain which is parallel to the y direction. So this is y direction, this is x. And if in this case, we can find a line certain which is parallel to the y-axis. And that's what I'm going to talk today. There are, there are much richer patterns, but I'm, unfortunately, I didn't have progress to discuss stability of those rich wave patterns. For example, if n equal 2, um, so this uh, n equal 2 means this is it has two columns, and if there are, if we choose f four, if we I designate four four parameters which is related to the amplitude of line solitons, then you can find two line solitons of the simplest type. So in this case, we can find a line soliton which is crossing, and uh, of course there appears some. If the matrix is more complex. It is not so simple like this. Then there is some complex pattern here, and this is not stationary. It, it change, the pattern modifies as time goes on. So first, before I st start to explain on stability of KP line solitons of KP2, I'd like to explain how how we discuss stability of solitary wave solutions of KDV. It's, so KDV is one dimensional equation. And uh, so it was, <coughs> something like this. And uh, it has a solitary wave solution, like, uh, first, I'd like to explain how to ex consider the severity of this one. First of all, uh, I think uh, I forgot to write 1 over 2 here. Um, first, I'd like to remind you that KDV can be written as a, written as a Hamiltonian system. Uh, so I also forgot to write x derivative here. And uh, so, if, so there should be x derivative. 
and x derivative is skewer joint. So this is so this equation is a Hamiltonian system. KTV equation is a Hamiltonian system, and as a result, it, the solution of KTV equation conserves energy. This one, and also it conserves momentum, which is related to the translation in x variable. So KDV has many conservation laws, but at, we, we will use these two quantities to discuss stability of solitary wave. How they are used is, is as follows. If you think of the ma manifold whose L2 norm is equal to solitary wave solution, and uh, draw a picture, schematic picture of energy function. So this is a manifold M. And uh, this, the graph is uh, energy function restricted on the manifold. Then, then the solitary wave phi phi c is characterized as a minimum point of this energy functional. And because and since the energy and both Elton norm is conserved quantity, if initial data u0 locates here, then the solution u sub t remains in this energy level. And because uh, the Elton norm is also conserved, it can only move around on this circle. And because of this reason, ut, the translation of u, uh, actually, the minimum point is not only free C itself, but all of its translation. So from this, because of this reason, the solution ut should remain to the tubular neighborhood of solitary waves. And how, this is how we people discuss stability of solitary wave. And, and here, here's a brief history of stability of solitary waves. First, first, Benjamin and Bonner proved stability of one solitons in H1. And using the fact that KDV has infinitely many conservation laws, Maddox and Sachs discussed stability of n solitons using <coughs> n plus one conservation laws. So they, they need to use, they need to assume that the perturbation should be small in HN norm. And later, Marte, Mel, and Tsai proved that any solitons is also stable in H1, thanks to the fact that after after any after the sol any solitary wave solution is resoluted, then he they use the fact that they can use this, argue the stability of each each solitary waves by dividing the energy by dividing a physical space uh, and consider these, basically these, each particle are uh, minimizers of, the, each solitary wave is a minimizer of the energy function no, restricted on, with this restriction. And uh, using this fact and uh, a kind of video identity, video identity to control how the dispersive wave moves, they this proves the stability, they were able to prove stability in H1. So that's the history of KDB. Do you mean by like gluing two solitons or is it like periodic domain? Uh, not, 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 not really. Actually, what the idea is something like this. Um, there are two solitary waves, but uh, you have a control on so, but uh, we know that dispersive wave moves only to one direction. So all the L term move into this part. And uh, what they discuss is a kind of reduction. When we discuss stability of these two lines, certain, it can be argued as a study. It can be shown that basically they show that what they show is that stability of two lines, certain, can be fo can be followed by stability of this one because they, con they are able to control their, that way this dispersive wave move only to this direction. And then for this one, this, this is only the stability of one solitary wave. 
So they are able to, to study this. And this argument is true for n solitons, even if there are another, another one. So it's a kind of induction. But so they use some cutoff function to of the energy to use the energy and do some a kind of induction arg argument. Actually, the proof is not induction, but basically the idea of the proof is induction. Okay. And uh, what? What? Oh, this one. What? Are? Where is it? Ah, okay. This one. If you think of the conservation law of KP2 equation, the first one is also a two conservation laws. For the time being, forget that line solution has infinite epsilon, so that we cannot use this quantity directly to solutions around line solutions. This is, I'm just going to do some heuristic argument, so please forget that U is actually a solution along line solution, which is uniform in y direction, and which has infinite n to norm as a result. So this is <coughs> L to norm. And the another conservation law is this Hamiltonian. But this one is not so nice as KDV case, because we are going to consider for the stability of line solutions for KP2, which means the sigma is positive here. And I, I'm sorry that I forgot 1 over 2 here again. And uh, because KP2 equation is a Hamiltonian system, um, it, the solution, L, the L2 norm of solution and the Hamiltonian of the solution is also conserved. But what is not so nice is that if you remember what the KP2 equation is, it has some term like here. And if you see the linear part of the equation, this is the highest order term. And this is another highest uh, order term in y direction. And uh, this, by scaling, this, these things should be same order, which means that in the scaling, x y derivative in one derivative in y corresponds to differentiation twice in the x in the x. So this one looks as if this is the zealous order term, but actually this is a, the first order term. So in the in the integrand, these two the first two terms has the same order. So this is the dominant part of this energy functional. And in the case sigma is positive, this has an opposite sign. So it's quite difficult to estimate the long time behavior of solutions by using this energy identity. The so thing is quite opposite in KP1 case because in KP, for the KP1, sigma is negative, which means these two dominant parts have the same sign. So it caused some huge difference between two equations. Um, probably I should probably skip here. This is an explanation of this antiderivative term, but I want to skip this one. So what happens for what the difference is quite large between KP1 and KP2. What is known for KP1? It has a stable ground state, so it has some localized solutions and it's known to be stable. But for KP2 equation, there is no traveling wave solution in the energy class. And this, because, probably because of this reason, we, don't, we have stability for line solutions of KP2, but the line solutions of KP1 is known to be unstable. Uh, it's the linear stability of line solutions for KP1 was first proved by Zaharoff in 1975. This was easy for him because he can easily compute one un un unstable eigenmorphs. And then by using some Cauchy theory, the Luce and Svetskov proved dynamical instability of these lines in these years. 
As for stability of KP2, line sources of KP2, it was conjectured when the equation was delivered, derived by Kadmotsev and Fitvia Shivri, and actually confirmed it's stable in L2 framework in 1997 by um, Alexander Pegon Sachs. And uh, what Baratsev, uh, I think Baratsev is a physicist, and what he do is slightly different from what Alexander Pegon Sachs did. What Pegot did, Alexander Pegot Sachs did is that in the L2 framework, if you consider the spectrum, if you consider the spectrum in L2, then it only locates on the imaginary axis. And what both F2 is, did is that they detect some eigenmoles which have some energy dissipation. And actually, you, they, are, they, are, they do not, they are, the eigenmoles found by Barthef never be a continuous eigenfunction in the L2 framework. Actually, it's exponentially growing in one direction, so it cannot be, it cannot consider to be a candidate of continuous eigenfunctions if you think in L2 framework. And if you read the carefully, he read his paper carefully, you can find that there are some eigenmoles in the positive, in the stable half frame, and also to the unstable half half frame. And these eigenmoles are continuous eigenfunctions in these eigenfunction spaces. A is positive. And this one, or well this one, I should, I, should, I should change the color. This one is corresponds a continuous eigenfunction in this framework. So all, the, all these are continuous. So this color and this one are continuous eigenfunction. Eigenvalues, and uh, actually this one is related to the time evolution to the positive time, and this one is related to the time evolution in negative. And of also there are some linear stability results by uh, Halagers and also I forgot to write, but but by Stefanov in other with other boundary conditions. And uh, I and Spesko prove that actually, if you assume periodicity in y directions, then what happens is that uh, Kp is an equation. What I'm going to t talk today is Kp equals the stability of line sorton in whole domain. But what I, I and Spesko did before is that we assume periodicity in this direction. So basically, uh, the width is limited, and in this case, what happens is that although the proof is not so exactly the same, the stability result is exactly the same with the KDV equation. So, physically, it's natural, and so it, in this case, people we don't need to use KP equations to consider the phenomenon. Actually, it's enough to use KDV equation. And yeah, I forgot to mention on well, poisonous love. First, the well, the of KP2 equation was studied by Ukai in eight, nine, eight, nine, 1989 by classical arguments like uh, the semigroup theory of Kato. And uh, later, in Bru Brugan proved its well posed in L2 framework by using, using his famous Brugan's norm. And late, and late, and there are so many works after, after his work. For example, many papers on the reporting was published by Morine, So, and Takaoka, and Spetskov, and so on. And what is now known is that if the initial data locates near line solitons, and if the perturbation belongs to the L2 norm, then the difference remains in L2 for all the time. This is proved by Morine, and so on, Spetskov. And uh, what it means is that 
line cyclotron is not so bad object. If you start with line cyclotrons and add some perturbation, this doesn't uh, expand so much. So suppose this is phi c x plus v zero, and at time t, it cannot be something like this. This doesn't occur. Um, in KDB, this happens because it's local. Line sorter is not local object in for K because this is uniform in y direction. So that uh, so being different from the KDB case, the line sorter don't have phase shift uniform phase shift like this. So it should be always like this, and there are some perturbation which remains in O2. So there should be some time evolution around here, but this uh, the phase shift, uniform phase shift in this in X doesn't occur. This is a one of the features of the line surgeons. And this that is ensured by this well poisonous result. This one. And now I want going to talk on explain some related results. First, this kind of stability of line solitary wave of line traveling waves were studied for heat equations. Uh, what is the most earliest one is probably the, this kind of heat equation. This heat equation is has a kink solution and they are known to be exponentially stable. And in this case, zero is an isolated eigenvalue. So if you think of consider the spectrum of the linear line operator. For 1D case, it has exponentially stable continuous eigenfunctions. And zero is uh, also, uh, zero is a point spectrum, which is laid to it to a phase shift here. And, but if you think of that the stability of line traveling wave, like this line traveling kink, so something like this wave pattern. If you think of this stability of line traveling waves, the phase shift is all, not uniform. It depends on transverse direction. And actually, this satisfies uh, heat equation of, of dimension n spatial, with spatial dimension n minus 1. So it decays in this order. And if you think of the stability of line kink solutions, then zero is not an eigenfunction anymore. Um, actually, the, the eigenfunction zero turns into a continuous spectrum like this one. And uh, and uh, what? And this parameter gamma corresponds to the behavior of solution which which is related to these continuous eigen functions. <coughs> that was studied by Jack C in nineteen ninety two and later by Capitra in nineteen ninety seven. Recently these models are studied by using maximum principle and people don't use this primitive method anymore because for heat equation uh, it's much better to use maximum principle than to do this primitive argument. And later, CPO Kukania um, studied King solutions for this one. And uh, he also did some analysis on King solutions. What he did is that actually gamma, this one is related to transversal dimension, and this has two dimensional parameters, x2 and x3. And what he did is that this equation gamma satisfies an equation of wave map. And using translating the result by Klarman, he proves that this line kink solution is stable. That's what he did. And now I'm going to talk on related results with KP2. Because uh, it has some the stability of line kink has, has to do with stability of solitary wave solutions of KDB. 
Suppose now we consider the stability of solitary wave solutions of KDV in this weighted space. What Pego and Weinstein showed in 1994 is that if the perturbation is small, both in H1 and also in this weighted space, then the, then the, solid, then the solution is as so then the line, then, then the solitary wave solution is asymptotically stable in this weighted norm. So it converges. Of course, KDB is a Hamiltonian system, so it never converges. The solution never converges to solitary wave solution in Elton norm as t goes to infinity. But this is weighted norm, and uh, what happens with this weight is that. Think of the, this is uh, x, and think of the moving coordinate, which moves with the same speed with solitary wave. And this one is solitary wave. And this is z equals zero. And uh, here is a weighted function. It's a positive. So. And what is known, what is known is KDB is that largest solid wave moves left in the fastest speed, and smaller solid waves moves in much slower speed in positive direction. So this moves very fast, and small solid waves moves very slowly. And if there are some dispersive type wave, this is a heuristic explanation. But the, if you compute the group velocity of dispersive wave, it should move. It has negative speed. So if you consider the w if you measure the behavior of solutions in this weighted space, this part decreases exponentially as time goes to infinity. So that's why we have exponential stability like this. And uh, here is some modulation parameter related to phase shift x and modulation parameter related to the amplitude of solitary wave. And uh, this has time derivative x is approximate, approximately equal to c. Uh, actually, this is, should be 2c. And the time derivative of the speed is ap approximately 0. And this is a modulation equation for one dimensional case, for the KDV equation. And what, should, what, is, expected, what is expected to, be hap to happen is that for KDV, for KP equation, if you think stability of line solutions, and if you think of perturbation in this class, we expect that there should be some modulation here. But the modulation parameter c is not, cannot be uniform in y direction. So there are some parameter y also. Um, the, the modulation speed has also, uh, is also, does all, also depends on the transverse direction. And the phase shift should also depend on the transverse direction y. And this, this is what, what is expected to happen. And uh, now next, I would like to introduce my result. I think this is quite primitive result, and there should be a lot of things to be done. Uh, because, of, because of the scaling invariance, suppose the initial speed is c is equal to 2, and consider the symptotic stability of this line solitum. Then what happens is that if line soliton has perturbation, which is small in this weighted space, and also small in this norm, actually this norm is needed just to use L, L, L infinity L1 estimate in y direction. So basically, it can be avoided just using a kind of Villier identity in a clever way, but I haven't done it, so I need this assumption. And under this assumption, we can find some modulation speed and modulation phase shift such that the solution converges to modulating line solutions as t goes to infinity in this weighted space norm. And also, in L2 sense, it's stable. And uh, and this one is an estimate on the modulating speed and modulating phase shift. What it says and is that 
the C is equal to 2 at the initial time. And uh, if you add some perturbation to a line soliton, so this is line soliton, and initially it's for an unper unperturbed one, the initial speed is considered to be 2. And if you give some perturbation locally, and here, then locally, of course, the speed of solid waves changes. But this, this error term on the, sp on the speed goes to 0 in L2 norm in Y as t goes to infinity. That is what it says. The first, that is what this means. And for this one, what it means is that x of ty is a phase shift. So if this is not, x is not uniform in y direction, the solitary wave has some, is curved. And x x sub y is, y derivative of x is, is a kind of angle between the y axis and the direction, the local direction of this line certain. So what this, what's the fact that this quantity decays as t goes to infinity is that as t goes to infinity, even if this curve, this line certain is twisted at the initial time, it becomes flat at least locally as t goes to infinity. This is what it says. So this is twisted at t equals 0. But for large t, the lines, part of the line certain becomes flat at least locally. But the problem is it cannot uh, be, the line certain cannot be, is not flat uniform in y direction, as I told, explained before. And actually, There are some twists here, and uh, these twisted parts travel with a, with a sp speed 40. And minus 40. And the propagation of this twisted part is described by a system of Vargas equation. So basically, these two quantities are solutions of Varga's system. And uh, the asymptotic behavior of this wave is a sphere solution of the Varga's equation. That's this theorem means. And uh, finally, this is a kind of remark. And these, phenom these things is, are expected by physicists, for example, by Patterson. And he, he use he derives he explains such a phenomenon by using uh, geometric optics for for some sim for some similar system, which is which is a kind of burger business system. It's not KP, but it has some similarity. The model has some similarity with KP, and he explains some um, this phenomenon for the business system by using geometric optics in a formal way. And uh, as a conclusion of the previous slide, this one, what we can conclude is that this is a, this set, set, set A is a whole set of line solution solutions. So it's something like a whole set of I forgot, uh, provided this is light. Um, maybe this could be some, uh, some things could be long, but the whole set of lines certain is given in this way. And if you consider the difference between solutions and this whole set of line solutions, it enlarges as t goes to infinity at the order of t to the power one fourth. Actually, this is not optimal, I believe. But at least, this, this explains that it should grow as t goes to infinity. 
So, and uh, that happens because I said that uh, there are some twisted part, and uh, for this part, this this is basically the same with original line solution. And here's a twist, and uh, the area of this part enlarges as t goes to infinity. So this is why we have this type of result. So to discuss stability of line solutions, we should change the definition of stability compared with the KDV case. This is what I want to say here. And now, in the last 15 minutes, I'd like to talk on technical sides of the proof. And if you think of the linearized operator of line solutions of KP2, this is exactly the same of linearized operator of KDV. And uh, in, the weighted, in the weighted space, what happened to the, K, the spectrum of the KDV is as follows. Because the dispersion, dispersive wave moves to the negative direction and the main solution wave moves to the light, if you see the spectrum of the linearized KDV operator in the weighted space, If you think in the spectrum in L2, of course, as, uh, all the spectrum should locate on the imaginary axis because it's Hamiltonian system. But in the weighted space, it, the spectrum uh, of the linear operator reflects the motion, the direction of the motion of the wave. So in that case, we have stable continuous spectrum here. And the only, the only other eigenvalue is zero, which is related to the space, spatial translation of solitary wave, and also the modulation of uh, uh, modulation of the speed of the solitary wave. So this is two-dimensional, but. We have some extra term here. And if you, you compute the Fourier transform of this one in the weighted space, then we have this quantity. And uh, what? This is true. Uh, we, have, we should have some y here. And uh, if you compute, And uh, we have some negative sign here. So and because of this if, uh, effect, in the weighted space, the last term stabilizes the solitary wave. And as a result, what happens is that there appears some continuous spectrum, which is related, originally related to the phase shift and the, speed of, the change of speed of solitary wave. So the modulation of line solution uh, the, is related to this continuous spectrum, which is only, which can be only considered to be the continuous eigenfunction in the weighted space. So now we consider this one, and uh, this one should be dx and d also dy. And now this. It, it, the zero is not an eigen function anymore, and there, there appears continuous spectrum instead here. And we need to find the PDE, which, which describes a motion which corresponds to the mode of this continuous eigen function. Okay. And uh, if you, and because of integrability, we can explicitly compute the continuous eigen functions like this. And you can see that if ether is supposed to be close to zero, so you can confirm that this has a kind of dispersion here. And it can express the eigen function problem is explicit, can be explicitly solved in this way. 
And as I explained, it grows exponentially as z goes to infinity, either. Uh, but, but if you, you consider the problem in this exponential weighted space, then for at least for small eta, this, 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 mode, this mode can be considered to be a continuous eigenfunction. And if you expand this continuous eigenfunction in eta, then approximately it's like a, a term with some uh, diffusion in y. And this corresponds to a phase shift in y direction. So it explains why is that this uh, twisted part propagates in the speed 4t. And, uh, at, and if you expand this part func func fun function in either, basically at the lowest order level, it's, it, it's the same as the, it's a linear combination of the x derivative of phi c and c derivative of phi c. So basically very similar to the behavior of KP, KDV, but it has some diffraction part term and also a wave, which has some part term which, which is related to the wave motion to the transverse direction. This is what we can find from the linear stability, linear modes. And what? Uh, okay. What? And now let G G sub G star be a um, continuous eigenmode of the adjoint operator and suppose that the initial data is orthogonal to this adjoint eigenmode at least for small eta. This is orthogonality condition. And this is a sort of secular term condition. And uh, with that assumption, uh, semigroup is exponentially stable. So what this cell means is that if you cut off this, this spectrum, which is very close to zero, then the, the semigroup generated by the realized operator of KP2 around line certain is exponentially stable. This is what this cell means. And I think it's not so clever to explain this, but I've, I'll explain. The trick to compute the IM function is to use a um, mechanism of inverse scattering. What I did is that the KP2 the KP equation is related to the modified KP2 equation by so-called Miller transformation. And what is so nice with this transformation is that this modified KP2 equation has kink solution, which is later than the Actually, here is mc plus minus. So this, there are mirror transformation of two types, which has positive sign here and which has negative sign here. And if you apply the mirror transformation with positive sign to this line kink, then it, it's mapped to line certain. But if you, uh, I'm sorry, this should be q sub c. Uh, if you map the line kink q sub c with this mirror transformation with negative sign, then it, it's mapped to zero. So Miller transformation is a kind of trans trans mapping which connects Q sub C, which is a solution of MKP2, to, to the null solution and uh, line solution. And if you linearize this Miller transformation, uh, it has some nice property. If you compute the uh, linearized Miller transformation, it, it's map solution of linearized K modified KP2 equation to a solution of linearized KP2 solution. So and, uh, this mapping has co-kernel, which corresponds to one of the I, one branch of continuous eigenfunctions. And this mapping also has a kernel, which corresponds to another branch of continuous eigenfunctions. So expect for these continuous eigenfunctions, actually this trans mapping is isometric. And uh, if you linearize solutions, keep equation around no solutions, it just, it's just this simple equation. 
and you can compute linear stability just by using Fourier transformation in very elementary way. So you can prove that this the solution of this equation is exponentially stable by using Fourier transformation. And because of isomorphism of these two mapping, we can conclude that mm -hmm. solution which do not include secular moles of which do not secular moles decay exponentially as t goes to infinity. That's a trick of the proof of the linear linear stability. And actually linear uh, uh, mirror transformation is quite useful also to discuss nonlinear stability. For example, uh, Mel and Vega proved that K uh, one soliton solution is stable in L2 by using this trick. And uh, if you apply the trick to KP2 equation, uh, if in this setting we c the sol line soliton solution is localized, is local has a L finite L2 norm, and in this case we can prove nonlinear stability of line solution directly by just using this mapping. Okay, and uh, time is running up. Um, if you think, uh, st so now we briefly discuss stability of this line solution. First, we decompose solution along line solution to some modulating line solution plus some modulate, modulating part for some, some remainder term and some, um, some, uh, and some extra term. This extra term is needed so to do some analysis, but uh, because time is limited, I don't think this part is so important to explain. If you plug into this uh, answers into the KP2 equation, we have some linear part this is a time derivative v, and this is a linearized operator along of KP2 equation along line solution. And this is this term is uh, related to modulation, and there are some extra nonlinear terms. And this cap small l is computed directly by sub this plugging this quantity into the KP2 equation, and we have something like this. And what we do is V is orthogonal to continuous eigenmores. And basically, continuous eigenmores, uh, con uh, um, so if you think of the spectrum, there are, there are some co stable continuous eigen function which are not related with dynamics of strain solution, but here are some continuous eigenmores which is related to dynamics of line solution. So we impose orthogonality V is also now V V is also now to these continuous eigenmodes, which is related to the dynamics modulating modulation of line solutions, and because this continuous eigenfunction is is a very sim is very similar to solutions of uh, solution to the secular modes of KDV equation, we can by imposing orthogonality condition basically. This one should be zero, and uh, also this one should be zero. This is very rough explanation, but these two quantities should be approximately zero. And as a result, we have this burger system, because thanks to the orthogonality condition. And we can analyze this the behavior of solution by applying the theory of this dissipative wave system, such as Kawashima's. And this is to analyze the modulation. And the another tr important part is to, is to control the L2 norm of V. Basically, we use, I use this quantity. This is the difference between solutions, the square of solutions, uh, and uh, the square of modulated line solutions. And uh, this doesn't, this is not exactly equal, but if you see, use this orthogonality conditions at eta equals zero, then at eta equals zero, then this also uh, continuous eigenfunction is exactly the same as this one. So in that case, 
If you use apply the authority condition at either equal to zero, then this is equal to this one, form, at least for in the formal level. And because this quantity is almost conserved as for, for all the time, we can control this quantity by the, this, this quantity of, of t at t equals zero. And because this term decay, and phi c also decay because c, this parameter c also decay as c t goes to infinity, we can conclude that the outer norm is bounded by the constant, the outer norm at initial time multiplied by some constant. So this is one trick. And the another trick is to estimate this, uh, estimate the non weighted norm of the remainder part v. And for at least for low frequency in Y, we can use apply the linear stability result of the semi group. Because in that case, uh, if we limit ourselves to the low frequency Y, it's exactly the same, analytically, it's exactly the same with one dimensional equation, such as KDV, in, if you think of the regularity of solution. So we can just uh, apply the Pego Weinstein method to estimate low frequency part of V, and uh, we get some decay estimate like this by combining the decay, the, the estimate of the modulation parameter C and X sub Y. And, and for fi high frequency, um, line certain is not a big object anymore because the constant coefficient part is more important for high frequency Y. So we can just compute Video identity in exponential weighted norm and using all the previous, plugging all the previous draws into the linear identity, we get a stability of high frequency in Y part, either in weighted space. So that, this is the end of the story. Thank you for your attention. Okay.